A lot of our work seeks to understand cause and effect relationships, whether X causes Y. For example, the majority of people who develop lung cancer are smokers, but does this mean that smoking causes lung cancer? Back in the 1950s, this was a legitimate research question. Could other differences between smokers and non-smokers account for the association, or might a third factor influence both? The causal effect of smoking on lung cancer is now clear, but it took years to establish this and drive the fact home. This is because determining causality is notoriously difficult. Epidemiology has a knack for throwing up supposed links between, for example, behaviour and health. These often turn out not to reflect cause and effect relationships. In science today, there is considerable interest in replicating results, sparked by concerns that a large proportion of published scientific results may be wrong, or at least misleading. If we took more care to repeat our studies, to check that we get broadly similar results each time, then surely our findings would be more robust. Perhaps, but a robust finding may still be wrong. X and Y may be very reliably correlated, but may not reflect a cause and effect relationship. This focus on replication stems from the idea, championed by the philosopher of science Karl Popper, that falsification is at the heart of the scientific enterprise. In fact, this is rarely how scientists work in practice. Falsification isn't everything. Another approach to exploring cause and effect relationships is inference to the best explanation. Peter Lipton, the late philosopher of science at the University of Cambridge, described this as the search for the loveliest, not simply the likeliest, explanation. This should be one characterised by scope, precision, mechanism, unification and simplicity. The process of arriving at the simplest and most likely explanation for an observation turns on being able to address the same question from different perspectives. Each approach will have its own biases and limitations, but if each gives the same answer, we can be more confident in the result. Known as triangulation, this is an approach that nicely complements traditional falsification. In the current debate around reproducibility, too little is said about the need for triangulation and multidisciplinarity, approaching the same research question from multiple methodological perspectives. The different approaches should each have their own strengths and weaknesses, in particular different sources, magnitude and hopefully directions of potential bias. Without triangulation, we may find ourselves with robust findings that are ultimately useless if our goal is to identify causal risk factors that we can modify to improve health. For example, having yellow fingers will predict a person's risk of lung cancer, and this finding will replicate robustly across different studies. This might even help us predict who will get lung cancer. But unless we also use this information combined with other evidence to home in on the underlying risk factor, cigarette smoking, and test this directly, that information alone will be of little use in understanding what causes lung cancer. Working in multidisciplinary teams is critical to triangulation, and the current emphasis on multidisciplinary team science gives us the opportunity to make triangulation a central and routine part of our work.